Hello again, manual applicators. My name is Jose Hernandez and I am with University of Minnesota Extension and I would like to welcome you to part three of Basics of Manual Management. In this section, we're going to be covering some of the aspects related with nutrient and manure management. The summary of the previous parts are that nitrogen and phosphorus containing manure are essential nutrients for crop production. However, there is some factors like nitrogen leaching to groundwater and nitrogen volatilization from surface applied manure that can cause losses to the environment. Phosphorus runoff is also the key important loss into the environment. The learning objectives in this section are to understand or to contrast and understand the difference between nitrogen-based and phosphorus-based manure management plans and outline some examples of proper and improper manure management. Let's start with manure nutrient management strategies. Typically, when we apply manure, we want to be doing, we want to either match the nitrogen crop needs or we want to match the phosphorus crop needs. So these are known as the nitrogen-based manure application rates or phosphorus-based application rates. Nitrogen-based is when we apply the manure based on our nitrogen crop needs and phosphorus-based are when we try to match the phosphorus crop needs in our manure application rate. Unlike commercial fertilizer or synthetic fertilizer where we can apply the exact amounts needed by the crop in terms of like nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, manure contains all the three nutrients at the same time. So if we apply based on nitrogen, then the crop needs for the for the other nutrients are going to be, we're going to be short or we're going to be over applying. Okay, and this is what I'm going to show you as an example. So this, this is that imbalance that we're dealing with manure nutrients. In this chart, what we're going to, going to be trying to show is we have our corn nutrient requirements in terms of like nitrogen, and phosphorus, and potassium. So we require a lot of nitrogen. We require some phosphorus and some potash, okay? And then here's an example of a dairy manure nutrient content, all right? So we have nitrogen, we have phosphorus, and we have potassium. Potassium is usually not a major concern because it doesn't cause any issues to the environment, uh, but nitrogen and phosphorus can be a concern. So in a nitrogen-based manure application rate, we're going to be matching our manure content or our manure supply with the demand of by the corn crop. So we're matching the nitrogen rates, nitrogen demand by the crop with our manures and of course, we're going to end up over applying the amount of phosphorus required by the crop and the amount of potash required by the crop. So this is a, a, a problem where we're going to end up building up the phosphorus in the soil. Okay, so we're over applying phosphorus. That phosphorus is probably going to stay in the soil for a long time. In this example, what we have is a phosphorus-based manure application rate. We have the same corn nutrient requirements and we have the same example of a dairy manure con nutrient content. Okay, but in this case, we're going to match phosphate needs. All right, and by matching those phosphate needs, we're going to be short or our nitrogen. So we're only going to be applying this amount of nitrogen. So we're going to come down in the spring and supplement with some urea or some other kind of like commercial fertilizer in order to have, in order to supply the nitrogen required by the crop. Another issue related with manure, manure and nutrient management is not only the amount that we applied and whether we based it on nitrogen or phosphorus based rates, but there's many issues related with the sources, whether it's manure, commercial fertilizer, soil sampling, and as well as transport processes, runoff, leaching, where do we apply it, when do we apply it. If we apply manure and we're going to have some events, uh, some rainfall events, there might be some runoff following the manure application. Or if we are applying in the winter of, on top of snow, for example, a lot of that manure is probably going to be uh, readily available for runoff in the spring. And whether we apply close to water bodies or tiles, for example, is going to be also an issue. 
So it is critical that we follow those setbacks for sensitive features. Some studies have shown that up to 90% of the phosphorus comes from about 10% of the land. So we need to identify those critical areas. That's why we have those setbacks for different um, critical sources where we, can, where we are not allowed to either apply manure at all or we are, we are allowed to apply, but we need to incorporate to reduce the potential runoff. So again, we can really reduce some of the environmental problems if we just follow some of the setbacks implemented by the pollution control agency. So the cornerstone for nutrient management or best management practices is the right input. So whether it's manure, nutrients, water, etc., the right time. So we want to make sure we apply when the, when the crop will be using those nutrients, the right amount. So make sure you, you look at your crop and you know how much that crop is going to be using. Okay. And make sure that you don't over apply nitrogen or you try not to over, over apply phosphorus in the right place, in the right location. Here is when uh, some of those sensitive features or uh, setbacks will come into place in the right manner where you incorporate, or eject, or surface applied and later come and incorporate, and even the right genetics. So some, some corn varieties might have different uptake characteristics than others. Here are some examples of correct manure management. So make sure that you determine the nutrient content in each manure via a lab analysis. So make sure that your client provides you with a lab analysis. Make sure you calculate your application rates based on the crop needs. So it's not the same corn grain than corn silage or alfalfa. Account for legume, legume credits. So if you're applying manure, let's say at the end of the soybean year, and you're going to be planting corn the following year, well, make sure that you account for the nitrogen that is left there by the soybean. Inject liquid manure or incorporate surface applied manure within 12 hours in order to conserve the nitrogen in the soil. Some examples of incorrect manure management. Over application of manure nutrients that can cause leaching or runoff of phosphorus. Application of manure in sensitive areas or near sensitive areas, near waterways, inlets, wetlands, etc., uh, that's going to cause serious environmental problems. So make sure you follow the setbacks. Uh, applying too early in the fall. So if we're going to be harvesting uh, some early beans and we decide that uh, we want to go and apply some manure and the soil is still above 50 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, chances are that nitrogen will not stay there for next year's crop. You don't see anyone applying a nitrous ammonia when the soil is above 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So I know it's an issue with logistics and we have a short window in the fall, uh, but if you apply when the soil is below 50 degrees, chances are that nitrogen will stay there when the crop needs the following spring. And then avoid repeated manure application in soils or fields with high soil test phosphorus because that will also increase the risk of um, phosphorus reaching surface waters. In summary, uh, nutrient supply and crop nutrient demands don't always match. So sometimes you need to choose between nitrogen-based rates or phosphorus-based rates, and that's okay. Uh, but just make sure you look and track your soil tests to avoid phosphorus runoff, and make sure you avoid nitrogen over application to reduce the risk of nitrogen leaching. Again, my name is Jose Hernandez, and I'm with the University of Minnesota Extension. Here's my contact information in case you have any questions about any of the topics presented today. Thank you very much.